Okay, it is 134, and I'll call this meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority to order and ask our Kirk clerk to uh, please call the roll. Director Frost? Here. Guerra? Here. Hume? Here. Daniels? Here. Kennedy? Maple? Here. Rodriguez? <laughs> Director Rodriguez is participating via um, Zoom, but I need... Director Rodriguez, can you hear me? Just tell us you're here. I don't think she can hear you. I don't think she can either. Yeah, that shouldn't affect her hearing. Well, both ways. Yeah, she's... Oh. There she is. But I don't think she Member can. Rodriguez, can you hear me? Nope. She's not responding. Okay, okay and um, we'll, we'll have um, Metro Cable work on that. And then um, she's participating remotely um, uh, via AB 2449 and has requested a just cause um, reason to participate in the meeting remotely. Um, Member Serna? Here. Swen? Here. Talamantes? Here. Valenzuela? Here. And uh, Chairperson Desmond? Here. And you have a quorum. Okay, thank you. I'd ask uh, Vice Chair Guerra to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, thank you. Face flag, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Member okay. Rodriguez, we, were, uh, yeah. we took the roll call and I called your name, but I don't think you could hear us. So if you could just... Yeah. Correct. I'm over. here. Okay, thank you. And um, if you could also um, let us know... Uh, that you are participating remotely, and is anyone in the room over the age of 18? No, uh, I am I am participating remotely, and nobody is here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Director Rodriguez. Madam Clerk, please read the announcements and instructions for public comment. This meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority is cablecast live on Metro for Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T Uber's cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.saccounty.gov. Today's meeting replays Sunday, January 14th at 2 p.m. on Channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com backslash metrocable14. To make an in-person public comment, please complete a speaker request form and hand it to the clerk. The chairperson will call your name when it's your turn to make a comment. To make a public comment by by phone, dial 916-875-2500 and follow the prompts to be placed in queue for a specific agenda off or off agenda item. You may also send written comments by email to boardclerk at sacccounty.gov. Your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record and that concludes the announcement. Okay, thank you and uh, welcome and happy new year uh, um, to everybody here in the chambers with us. So we will move right on to uh, item number one. Item number one is selection of chair and vice chair for calendar year 2024. And uh, this time of year, this first meeting of the year is when we uh, nominate or select our incoming chair and vice chair. And I'll start this item out by uh, turning it over to our uh, director, Kevin Busey. Uh, wonderful. I just want to provide a little background on this item. So, uh, so any board member may serve uh, as the chair or vice chair. However, the chairmanship has traditionally alternated between the county and the cities. The cities have also traditionally alternated between the city of Sacramento and the other cities. Um, so for 2024 calendar year, it would be the city of Sacramento's turn as the chair and the county of Sacramento's turn as vice chair if we follow that traditional format. Uh, and then a complete history going back to 1988 is included in your staff report. All the way back to 88. I did not review it back that far. So I'll open, up the, uh, open it up for discussion among the uh, directors. <clears throat> I'd like to move uh, uh, that uh, the current vice chair, Eric Guetta, uh, be nominated for uh, chair and uh, director Cerna vice chair. Second. Any other directors? Any public comment on this item? Okay, please we call We do not have anyone signed up to speak. And call I'll the roll or are we gonna vote electronically? No, I need to take the roll call, please. Thank you. Member Frost? Guerra? Aye. Hume? Aye. Daniels? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Maple? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Cerna? Aye. Swen? Aye. <clears throat> Telemontes? Aye. And Valenzuela? 
Yes. And the motion carries by unanimous vote with those members present. And, and, and I'm an I as well. I'm so sorry, Chairperson Desmond. Oh, yes. yes. Boy, no oh. kidding. <laughs> Boy, you know, we saw this on I'm Tuesday. I'm so buddy. sorry. I, I was kicked to the then curb very quickly. All I did not think you would do it as well. But <laughs> I'm um, so sorry. Well, with that, I'm happy to take the gavel and turn it over to my my colleague here to my left. I don't think we need to take a recess to, to switch seats uh, uh, six inches. So I'll turn this over to uh, incoming chair Geta. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Well, th thank you very much, uh, Chair Desmond, or outgoing Chair Desmond. First, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, thank uh, our chair for uh, for a, 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 um, a year with a lot of questions and I uh, and a lot of uh, um, you know concern about figuring out what our future was. And so, I do want to thank him. You know, he took a lot of leadership on the the future transportation funding subcommittees uh, rounds, and uh, particularly for our Measure A. And also, um, you know, his engagement at SACOG has been uh, critical for us here because it's been part of our funding rounds and making sure that everyone, including uh, our partners in the county specifically, have uh, equitable distributions. And I appreciate his advocacy and also, uh, you know, helping uh, provide some, some leadership, you know, on uh, between some of our smaller cities and their, the, you know, how, how we're going to deal with uh, some voting questions between Galt and Alton and find a fair resolution. And I appreciated his, his uh, stewardship and leadership to finding an equitable way so that every part of our community uh, had a vote. And now we know that those two communities are, are communicating uh, uh, very closely about the needs of the South County. Uh, but finally, uh, I think an item for today, I appreciate his advocacy to making sure that uh, as we look as a region uh, on transportation funding, that the uh, Sacramento County and its uh, and its cities also maintain its uh, 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 presence and uh, and making sure that as uh, the future question of of tolling and uh, and what happens with the impacts and also the revenues of that that the Sacramento region and particularly Sacramento County has uh, maintains its uh, its prominence in that so I do want to thank him for uh, also uh, being able to keep us uh, on time and in and out for the other JPA so I, I think he deserves a big round of applause for his, his uh, years of uh, here on, on SDA <laughs> He also did it as chair of the county board, which is not an easy combination there. So I want to thank him for that. Thank you, Chair Geta. And I, you neglected to mention that I'm an all-around nice guy, too. So, you know, <laughs> on top of it. So, but thank you. It was an honor to serve, and, and I enjoy serving with all of you on this very important uh, uh, transportation authorities. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Okay, Madam uh, Clerk, we'll go ahead and move. Uh, since there are no more comments from the board, uh, we'll move on to item number two. That would be your comments from the public regarding matters not on the agenda, and we do not have any um, anyone um, signed up to speak. Very good, uh, Madam Clerk. We'll go ahead and move on to item number three. Item number three is executive is the executive director's report. Okay, wonderful. Um, so since we did not have a December meeting, we're going to do a quick presentation on kind of everything that was accomplished in 2023. Uh, before we hit that, I want to highlight a couple of items that are in the executive director support. Um, we made a lot of important changes to our freeway service patrol the last uh, two or three months. And just want to make sure everyone's aware staff's really watching the expenditures on the freeway service patrol to ensure that we stay within budget. Uh, there's more detail in the executive, executive director's part. Uh, report. Uh, second item is the SAGOG, which their staff is here, which is nice. Uh, they have this carbon reduction program. Uh, it's a grant program. The applications are due in February. It's a fairly small program, but it focuses on trails, uh, zero emission vehicles, and s some sustainable mobility options. And so uh, SDA staff has been coordinating with the county and uh, the variety of cities, including SACRT, on uh, is there a way to take SACOG's regional trail network plan um, and look at it at, a, at the county level and do a little bit of planning around uh, maybe a county-wide project that we could do and get a lot of, uh, potentially get consensus around a project or a set of projects and then um, uh, submit for a much larger grant application in the future. So right now those discussions are ongoing. If there's any action that may come out of that, it would come at the February meeting. So I want to make sure everybody's aware. Uh, final item is uh, just to highlight item six was on our consent uh, agenda is um, our quarterly status reports for the capital projects and um, 
I want to say I want to thank Dustin. Dustin did a lot of work to get our capital status reports updated in a format so everyone could really understand uh, the status of all these projects that are being funded with Measure A. Uh, it's much more transparent. It's very clear on schedule now. Um, and so Dustin did that work. Uh, we engaged our independent taxpayer oversight committee as well over several meetings to get that report in a format that they liked as well. And so I think it's a it's going to be a, a nice reporting format that we have that we can use from. Um, for ongoing reporting. And with that, we'll jump right into this uh, quick presentation. Uh, hold on one moment, uh, Mr. Busey. I think uh, uh, Board Member Supervisor Kennedy has a question here. Thank you, Chair. More of a comment. I'm, I'm really, really happy to hear about the trails and, and looking at that because for you know decades and generations, we haven't considered trails transportation, uh, but, but leisure activity, and, and I, I think this is fantastic. And we have an opportunity here because in Sacramento County, our problem isn't so much the lack of trails, it's the lack of connectivity of the trails. So That's I think correct. we have a, a really good opportunity to, to, to just join all of those communities that are already pushing trail networks within their own jurisdiction. So thank you. Thank you, Board Member Kennedy. Uh, Mr. Busey, you can continue. on the 2023 and major accomplishments uh, and I'll be doing it as long with our county manager Dustin and Dustin will start us out. All right. Let's see. There we go. Well, good afternoon. So to start everything off, this is a financial overview of the 2023 fiscal year, which ended a few months ago. So to highlight a couple of things here. This is all cash out basis. So you'll notice that the CIP program at the bottom is only 13 million. We allocated more money than that to that program. Um, it just was not spent. Um, and that's partially because jurisdictions and project spending is all um, kind of fluid and happens and fits and starts. The portions above are the ongoing programs. And I'd like to highlight Ielton and Galt. They get direct allocations that are a little bit different than everybody else. Um, most of the other jurisdictions, all the other jurisdictions flow through these other programs of traffic control and safety, safety and streetscapes and city street and county road maintenance. Uh, I'd like to also highlight the city streets and county road maintenance and the Sacramento transit operations and maintenance safety that SACRT gets. Both of those make up about two thirds of the total funding. And I'd just like to take a moment to recognize that all of these programs make a significant impact to the jurisdictions that we pass the funding on to and the citizens in the jurisdictions. And this slide's just a quick overview of the a couple of the bond items that came up this year. We reaffirmed our AAA credit rating. Um, you've heard about this quite often. Um, we have a AAA, which is the highest available credit rating. It affords the authority, the best interest rates, and the best financing options available. So we have some, some wiggle room with, or we have more wiggle room than if we were to have a, a lower credit rating. And this also demonstrates our commitment to financial stability and, and effective financial management to keep the authority on solid ground. And the other big effort this year was the preparation for the bond refinancing, the variable rate bond refinancing, which we financed 318 million, and that transaction took place in September of this year. So, another important financial item is the uh, Measure A MOUs that were authorized this year. Um, and all the numbers off to the, the right here, that's a five year estimate at the time of uh, MOU um, approval. So, it's not an up to date number. Um, and there was a significant effort to develop and secure approval for these MOUs, and they will continue the programs that, that we offer with the jurisdictions and other partner agencies. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Kevin. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, we're just trying to uh, talk about how much funding that we were able to distribute over the last fiscal year, and then what we anticipate over the next five years being close to three quarters of a billion. So. 
A uh, couple other, I think, successes for 2023 uh, neighborhood shuttle program. So that's a competitive program. Um, we went through the process this year of um, requesting proposals. Uh, there were presentations to the board in May and then actual grant awards in June. Um, total awards were $3 million over the next three years. That's part of our Measure A neighborhood shuttle program. Uh, I want to highlight a couple of those. So about 600,000 went to paratransit for two programs, one being people to produce and one to, to, called home to healthcare. Um, they're, they're about getting to roll those out. But uh, I mean, people to produce is a, is, a, is a really good program. So it essentially allows um, people to get to farmer's markets, uh, addresses those uh, food desert issues as example. And then the home to healthcare program is another good program um, as well, because it allows people who can't necessarily get on the fixed route or um, current routes of, of SEC-RT and get on these deviated fixed routes to get to these healthcare appointments they need to be. Uh, and then the second much larger award was the 2.4 million for SAC-RT for the Smart Ride program. Uh, definitely helped keep that micro mobility, or sorry, program going, um, which is another nice program that adds a benefit to uh, SAC-RT service. Uh, this other one is the Smart Growth Incentive Program Strategy. So we have these funds through Measure A. It's one of our other competitive programs. And so there was a strategy that was done, uh, approved by the board in November of 2022, to essentially leverage those funds on um, these community design program. So it would allow the counties and the cities to apply for this SACOG community design program, and then the Measure A funds would provide the match. So if you had a city, uh, or a county didn't have enough local match to apply, this would allow them to apply. Um, so a very successful uh, $11 million in awards, uh, only about $1.4 million in Measure A funds. So we were able to leverage uh, Measure A funds uh, at a ratio of $7 to $8 to $1 Measure A funds. So another good uh, program. Uh, let's talk about the SB1 Local Partnership Program. This is a program that we can compete for because we are a self-help county. Uh, we went through a process last year to do a call for nominations, uh, project presentations to the board, and then a formal ranking process. Uh, this ended actually in 2022. Um, but we, uh, SDA submitted two applications, one for the US 50 Gold Line Corridor Enhancement Project, and the other for the White Rock Road Safety and Congestion Relief Project. Um, and the uh, results of these awards came out in June of this year. Um, and we did secure $25 million for the US 50 Gold Line Corridor Enhancement Project. And the neat thing about this is we were able to split those funds across two agencies. Uh, we had $15 million going to the US 50 and Hazel Avenue interchange projects to address some safety, to do some grade separations over light rail. Um, and then another $10 million went to modernization of the Gold Line, uh, specifically stations in Sacramento, County of Sacramento, Folsom, and Ranch Cordova. Uh, so this is a good good win. And the other one thing I want to point out is the US 50 Hazel Avenue Interchange is a Measure 8 project. So, we're, uh, so another one we did was the SB1 Trade Corridor Enhancement Program. Um, we, uh, we were awarded essentially $13 million for Measure 8 projects. Uh, $10 million was for the I-5 Managed Lanes Project for which STA applied. And another $3 million went to the Grand Lane Road Project for which the connector applied. Uh, some advocacy letters of support. So we've come to the board quite a few times to get letters of support. Um, and all three of these projects got funding. I talked about the ones on the left and the right, but the middle one, which is the Capital Corridor Regional Transit Project, I believe that was about a $75 million award. And about two thirds of those projects are in Sacramento County. So it made a lot of sense to support that project. And that's what the board did. Uh, future funding. So we, uh, we created a subcommittee of the board. We had five, five meetings in April, May, and June. Um, there was a report out in August, and then a presentation in September. There was a lot of work that went into this. Um, and I, th I, wanna pr I appreciate everyone's effort on this. Um, I think we came out of it realizing that we need to do more outreach and education on the existing measure more than anything. Um, but it was a lot of work, and I appreciate everyone's effort on it. And then the final item, uh, Freeway Service Patrol. Uh, so just our fiscal year accomplishments, we had uh, nearly almost 35,000 assists, which is, which is more than last year. Um, we went through an effort in October, November, I talked about earlier, to really uh, right-size the program. Uh, we removed the lowest performing zone, which is zone eight. And then we, uh, we optimized several zones as far as how the fleet would work. Um, so I think we're gonna be in good shape. And again, we're watching that program to make sure it stays on budget. And with that, uh, that ends my presentation. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Busey. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Th seeing none, thank you, Mr. Busey. Madam Clerk, 
Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our next uh, um, part of the agenda, which is the consent calendar items four through seven. Um, are there any comments from the public on these items, uh, Madam Clerk? No, we do not have any public comments on the consent items or uh, item number three. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, I'll move to uh, approve consent items. It's been uh, properly moved by Board Member Talemant. It's properly seconded by Board Member Maple. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none from the board, Madam uh, Clerk, could you please call the roll? Director Frost? Aye. Desmond? Aye. Hume? Aye. Daniels? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Maple? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Cerna? Aye. Swin? Telemontes Aye. and Valenzuela yes. and Chairperson Guerra. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Madam Clerk, we'll move on to our next item. Item number eight is a receive and file the Measure A revenue forecast. Well, hello again. I think we got a primer on this one. Yes. All right. Well, good afternoon again. Uh, to start things off. This, just to frame the presentation, we get routine um, semi-annual projections from our, um, one of our consultants, Avenue Insights, and we'd like to bring them to the board before we release them to the jurisdictions and kind of prime, prime everyone for what to expect for the year. Um, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone since we talk about it pretty regularly. Um, this revenue overview is a, presented as a table just for clarity because some of the smaller items in our revenue wouldn't pop out in a chart, so to speak. So our most significant item is the sales tax, obviously, the, and then the um, impact fee program is higher than we have projected, and that's, it's been consistently high, but we can't rely on it continuing to be high just because it's a very variable uh, revenue source. The freeway service patrol is basically on, on budget, and the SAFSA program, as we've talked about before, has sunset in April of 2022, so we're still receiving some residuals. Um, and interest in other is significantly high this year because of the, the interest swap agreements that have paid into that. Um, that's offset in the increased debt service that we have as an authority. So that's a summary of where our revenue sources were last year. And that brings us to the sales tax forecast this year. This chart represents where we've been and where we're going. The red line separates what has happened and to the left and to the right is where we're going. The dotted line there is the 2024 budget, which was projected in December of 23. So as you can see, it is 2025's budget's gonna be reduced slightly on the overall, um, and that's about 6%, it's 6 decline over the remaining course of the measure. And you'll notice in 2039, we only have nine months of revenue. That's why it drops off. And moving on, this slide represents our budget to actuals, just to show where our original budgets were and where we came in with actual revenue numbers. And as you can see, we're, we're pretty close with the exception of 2021 and 2022. Those two years, as we all remember, it was COVID and that really drew a surge of um, income taxes or sa sales taxes in the region. And we also had the wafer decision, which significantly boosted sales tax revenues. And that brings me to the conclusion of the presentation. Are there any questions? Any questions? Uh, yeah, Board Member Daniels. Yeah, can you go back to the sales cast, uh, sales tax forecast? The this mountain. Yes. The mountain. We'll call it the mountain. Um, why is uh, what's the crystal ball that tells it's going to drop off in 2033 and then significantly in 2038? That is a forecasted recession, and that's oh. the way that our, our forecasters build it out. Sell, sell, sell. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So okay. you, you can set your calendar set. <laughs> so uh, forgive me, but who's forecasting a recession in 2038? 
Is this just based on cycles and stuff like that? Yes, yes. It's, what they've seen in the past is it's about an, at every 10 years or so, there's a recession. Okay. So looking back to 2010, looks like it didn't really happen over the last 13 years or so. It, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks. and yeah. to to add some color to that, Sacramento County is fairly um, insulated from what else happens in the country because of the large government um, employee base here. So our sales tax numbers don't follow other areas of the country. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Great. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Any other questions from the board here? This is again a receive and file. And uh, Madam Clerk, any questions, comments from the public on this item? I did not receive any speaker requests. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Dustin. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on, move on to item number nine. Item number nine is the um, receive information on the creation of the Capital Area Regional Tolling Authority and the YOLO 80 Managed Lane Project and provide direction as appropriate. Mr. Busey. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. So we're going to do a, we're going to have a SACOG, Kathleen Hanley is, uh, is going to come up from SACOG. She's going to uh, present on kind of an overview of where they're at on this, uh, on tolling, tolling governance, um, some of tolling projects. Uh, we'll ask those questions. Uh, we'll get any questions from the board we have then. And then there'll be another presentation from myself talking about kind of the direction that we're looking for to move this conversation forward. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kathleen. Good afternoon, Kathleen. Yeah, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and to be able to present to the board this afternoon. As Kevin mentioned, my name is Kathleen Hanley. I'm a principal transportation planner at SACOG and here to provide you an update of the conversations that have been going on at the SACOG board regarding the development of a regional tolling authority and in particular the YOLO 80 corridor improvement project. So in my presentation today, I'm gonna to start with some background on managed lanes. I know that there are some board members here today who also sit on the SACOG board, so I hope you all will forgive me for the, the rehash, but also wanna make sure those board members who do not are up to speed on, on what we're talking about here today. I'll provide a little bit of information on the YOLO 80 corridor improvement project, which is being led by YOLO County Transportation, YOLO, yeah, Transportation District and Caltrans District 3, but we have a member of YOLO TD here today if you have any sort of technical questions about the project. And then we'll get into the heart of it with tolling governance and I'll talk about some next steps, including what's happening with SACOG's board cycle this month. So I wanna start with the ba very basics of a definition of what a managed lane is. So as it sounds, a managed lane is a lane that you manage by one or more conditions. We talk a lot about um, managed lanes as, as a topic, but I wanna be specific about what they can look like and how we get down to talking about toll lanes in specific for this presentation today. So one of the ways you can manage a lane is by vehicle type. Examples of that would be transit only lanes or truck only lanes. You can see in the photo here, there's sort of a bus, bus only lane um, on the highway that's in Santa Cruz County. And we have two short segments of truck only lanes, mostly in Southern California, um, over the pass into Los Angeles. You can also manage a lane by occupancy. These are commonly called high occupancy vehicle, HOV, or carpool lanes. I imagine this board is very familiar with this lane type. We have quite a few of them in this region, and in particular in Sacramento County. You can also manage a lane by time of day. These can be reversible lanes. That's what's shown in the image um, above that, which is the uh, Bay the Golden Gate Bridge, and it shows that lane in the middle, which is changing direction depending on where the peak flows are. And you can also have a part-time shoulder use. That's when sh it's a shoulder when it's not during the peak, and then vehicles are able to use that shoulder to help, again, address some of the peak period concerns. Um, the, the type of managed lane we're gonna be talking about today is a toll lane. So there are two types of toll lanes. The first is called a high occupancy toll lane. In this type of toll lane, high occupancy vehicles and the tolling authority would set what that standard is, but generally speaking in California, that's two or more passengers or three or more passengers. Those vehicles are allowed to use the lane for free and all other vehicles for single occupancy would have to pay a toll in order to use a hot lane, a high occupancy toll lane. The other type of toll lane is called an express lane. In this type of toll lane, all vehicles are required to pay a toll, but typically high occupancy vehicles receive a discount. So these two terms are used interchangeably a lot in transportation planning, but that's basically the difference. Carpoolers are free in hot lanes and carpoolers just pay less in express lanes. So the currently adopted SACOG Metropolitan Transportation Plan and Sustainable Community Strategy includes this map here shown of the managed lanes that are projected over the next 20 years in the Sacramento region, many of which are located in Sacramento County. There are two projects in particular that are sort of farther along in the process of becoming toll lanes than others. The first of which is the, the main topic of discussion today and the topic in the region right now on many boards, which is Interstate 80 in Yolo County. It currently has a draft environmental document that's out for public comment until Friday. 
However, Interstate 5 in Sacramento County is currently having an environmental document under development. And so part of the reason we're here today and really wanting to engage this board on this issue is with the understanding that toll lanes are, are likely to come next in Sacramento County. So just a bit of background on what the Yolo 80 corridor improvement project is. So it extends from the Yolo Solano County line to the sort of left side of that map there along Interstate 80 over the causeway. Um, and then it splits and includes both the across the top section in Yolo County of Interstate 80 and onto US 50 to the Sacramento County line. The goals of the project are to improve person throughput and goods movement and to also improve modality, basically provide more travel choices for folks who are traveling along that corridor and make travel more reliability. Um, I, like many of you, I'm a native of this region and I think what we, we know what it's like to travel on this corridor the first day it snows or anytime there's a vehicle stuck in the outside lane, so it's a really a significantly congested corridor. This project itself is being managed by Caltrans District 3 and Yolo Transportation District. So SACOG's involvement is largely focused on the tolling governance pieces, but we're working closely in partnership with those two entities on the project development. The project currently has $97 million of committed funds. 86 million of those dollars are discretionary federal infra funds. Those infra funds are um, need to be obligated or start to be spent. The project essentially needs to go to construction to use those funds this year. So what's really driving this quick pace on tolling governance is those funds and trying to make sure that we can successfully deliver those funds as a region. As we all know, our, a good reputation of successfully delivering federal discretionary funds makes it easier for all of us to seek similar funds in the future for other projects. However, the total project cost, depending on what alternative is selected through the environmental process, can range from 230 to 465 million dollars. As I mentioned, the project's currently in environmental. The draft environmental document was released in November. Comments are due on Friday, and we expect a final environmental document sometime in March. Design is expected to be complete this summer, and we need to start construction in order to meet that infra deadline of September 2024. So we'll start seeing um, construction ideally this fall, and it will take between two and three years, depending on the extent of the project that is ultimately constructed. I want to talk a bit about toll revenue and expenditures at a high level. This is a very complicated issue, one of which I, I'm happy to take some questions on um, when we get to board discussion here. But I want to talk about the difference between gross toll revenue and net excess toll revenue. So gross toll revenue, right, is gross. So that's the funds that come in through the system when tolls are collected on a toll lane. State law requires that many types of expenditures are must come first in a specific order for gross toll revenue. So leakage is um, the amount of when you can't catch a license plate or other issues related to sort of system that there's just some natural loss in revenue through that process, then you have to pay all of the banking, toll collection operations, and facility operations that are required to keep the toll lane in process. All the customer service, for those of you who use the system in the Bay Area, the fast track, how you get your transponder, all of that costs money and needs to come first from the gross toll revenue. Then you get to net toll revenue, but even then there are still some required line items that need to be paid for before we get to net excess toll revenue. Those include debt service, if the tolling authority has bonded or done any type of debt service um, on those accounts, and then needs to create reserve accounts in order to protect the tolling authority to be able to continue to pay for its operations if, say, there's a pandemic that suddenly makes people stop driving and it's not generating as much revenue anymore. Only once all of those line items have been paid for is there the ability for there to be net excess toll revenue. State law requires that net excess toll revenue is spent on the corridor where those tolls were collected but the tolling authority would adopt an expenditure plan to decide how those net excess toll revenues are spent. I also want to be clear about things that can impact net excess toll revenue. So looking at toll prices and operating hours. Do you operate on the weekends? How early do you start operating? How late do, do you collect tolls for? Do you provide any discount programs, including transit passes like they do in other areas or discount for low income users? Also, there are various factors of a toll system that affect how much revenue it generates in particular. So I want to be clear about where we see in California what types of toll systems tend to be larger revenue generators. And those are ones that have long toll facility length. So the longer lane you have, right, the better sort of um, benefit you're providing a potential customer to use your toll lane. If they can save time going 40 miles across a region, then it's a, a lot greater benefit for them to pay to use that. If your toll lane is only two miles long, you're not as much of a competitive advantage or less likely to get toll revenue. Similarly, if you can have sort of a toll direct connector where you can get directly from Interstate 80 to I-5 or so on and so forth without having to go back into the general purpose lane, you tend to have more tolls collected as well. And the last type of toll lane that it tends to be a better 
water revenue generator is a dual lane facility where you have two, two toll lanes running in tandem next to each other. That provides better reliability and then for more travelers to be able to use the toll facility. So none of these particular options are really being looked at in YOLO 80. So I just want to level set with folks that particularly as we get started with this in the region, we're not looking at toll facilities that are likely to generate a lot of net excess toll revenue. So um, in order for a toll facility to be approved, the state legislature used to have to approve each an individual toll facility. They, through a bill called Assembly Bill 194, delegated that authority to the California Transportation Commission. So the California Transportation Commission has this process by which a segment of the state highway system can get approval to have a toll facility on it. That process has three parts. The first is this big project application. It's this long report where you need to show that, one, the toll facility improves the highway, vehicles are moving better, there's more reliability in general, it's good for the system. And you also need to show that based on your best guess, you think it's gonna pay for yourself, for itself. You think there's a market case that there's gonna be sufficient toll revenue to be able to at least pay for the toll operations. Then CDC has a public hearing regarding the toll facility application. That public hearing needs to be held near the actual toll facility. So in the case for Yolo 80, this would be a public hearing for the community somewhere in Yolo County for CTC and its commissioners to be able to hear from residents on how they feel about the toll facility coming to their area. And finally, ultimately, the California Transportation Commission and those commissioners make a decision based on whether on the application and the other materials. So at the December SACOG board, um, the staff presented an information item to our board members on all of this information and what's going on with YOLO 80 and, and sort of where the region is at on developing a regional tolling authority to be able to be the tolling authority for YOLO 80 and ideally for other toll projects in the region. In general, the, the board members' feedback came in sort of two types. The first was really a big focus on Caltrans's role in the future, future Joint Powers Authority. As I get into what's proposed for the regional JPA, you'll see that um, we're looking at giving Caltrans a voting seat. This would be the first time that Caltrans would have a voting seat on a tolling authority in California. And there was a lot of concern um, from the board members on what a lack of clarity would be on what their voting role would be, what it would look like to have a non-elected official sitting in a voting position on a board, given that Caltrans, it would be a staff person sitting on that board. But everyone sort of un you was united around the idea that we want a better and more productive relationship with Caltrans. I know this board considers a lot of state highway related expenditures, and, and we know that how beneficial it is when you have a good and transparent relationship with Caltrans as you go about those projects. The second type of main board feedback in the December meeting was regarding the JPA appointments and how the actual structure of the JPA would be. Wanted to make sure that we're balancing sort of the need for sufficient local representation for the communities that have a toll facility, right? If there's a toll facility in a particular city or a particular county, want to make sure that those folks are able to weigh in on how that's impacting their community. We're also there needing to be a need for a larger regional system so that we make sure that we have a system that works for everyone. These highways are, are regional in nature. You know, folks travel from Placer into Sacramento County, folks bypass our whole region and go from the Bay Area into Tahoe. So I want to make sure that what we're developing can generate sufficient revenue by having good regional coordination. Also wanted to see a lot of clarity on how the board grows over time. So the way the JPA is structured is to have some initial members focused around the YOLO 80 corridor project and to provide some clarity on what it would look like when Sacramento County got a toll facility and when other counties in the region got a toll facility in the future. In particular, between the December board meeting and the January board meeting, we got a lot of feedback from your staff on a desire for some greater clarity on Sacramento County's representation in this tolling authority, and I'm pleased to be able to provide some more of you, some more of that information to you today. So I want to talk a bit about what SACOG's staff has recommended for the transportation committee that met yesterday. So the proposal is to create a new joint powers authority to be the tolling authority for the region. That would be called the Capital Area Regional Tolling Authority, or CARTA, for the remainder of my presentation. It would have three initial members. SACOG, who would appoint one um, at-large seat and one voting seat per county that's a member of the JPA. The second member initially would be Yolo County Transportation District, which would have two voting seats appointed by Yolo County Transportation District. And then Caltrans would have one voting seat. That will be the three initial members, and then as a new toll facility comes online in a new county, the, uh, the new county would also receive two voting members that would be appointed either by Sacramento Transportation Authority, Placer County Transportation Planning Agency, or El Dorado County Transportation Commission, depending on which county was the one um, in, under discussion. 
So I want to talk a little about what this scenario looks like of how the board seats would sit. So if we imagine the sort of initial scenario that we're picturing where Jeff Yolo County is a member of the JPA, you have the one Caltrans voting seat, you have the one SACOG at large voting seat, and then you have three representatives from Yolo County, one of whom is appointed by SACOG, so there's overlap between the SACOG board and the CARTA board from that county's representation. If Sacramento were to be the next county that had a toll facility and joined the JPA board, you would have the same sort of first five members. You'd add three new voting members, two appointed by Sacramento Transportation Authority and one appointed by SACOG. The sort of uh, full build out of the members who are in the JPA agreement would look like this with the addition of three more members from Placer, one from SACOG, two from BCTPA, and three more members for El Dorado, one appointed by SACOG and two appointed by EDCTC. SACOG staff also looked at a variety of different governance options, and I can provide more detail about any of these if any of the board members are interested, but in essence, we looked at various different structures of a JPA that could exist, and also looked at the potential for SACOG to serve as the regional tolling authority, um, and really evaluated these against four key principles when identifying what the staff recommendation for governance structure should be. The first of those principles, which is the, the gray columns I'm talking about now, is the risk to the YOLO 80 project. With that $86 million in discretionary funding, we really want to make sure that whatever governance decisions we need to make, we can make them in a timely and efficient manner to get those funds as protected as possible. SACOG as an organization would also like to limit risk to itself and ensure that you know SACOG staff who are really specialists in planning and policy are, are doing what, what they're mandated to do and what they do best and sort of limit the additional liability and financial risk to SACOG. And then we want to balance those two things I talked about in the early slides that we heard from our board members about this, this tension and this need for both regional partnership and a system that works regionally and the need for clear local representation for the communities who are directly involved and have toll facilities. So I want to recap a little bit about what happened yesterday at the SACOG Transportation Committee. So I presented uh, this governance structure was the staff recommendation and we asked the SACOG Transportation Committee to consider that governance structure for action. I will say we also presented them three additional voting requirements uh, in discussions with your staff. We heard that there was this need to ensure that Sacramento County and its communities would um, have the ability to have a more direct say in how net excess revenues would be spent for the corridors within the community. Basically to ensure if we're looking at making investments and improvements for Sacramento County communities as a result of their toll facilities in that area, um, that there need to be that sort of um, uh, additional guarantee. So what SACOG staff provided as an additional attachment to our transportation committee members yesterday was a look at different voting requirements that would ensure that in order for the total card of board to adopt a plan for net excess toll revenues, it would not just need a majority of the card of board, it would also need um, additional affirmative votes either from all counties or from the counties who are directly involved in the corridor. The idea of this is so that the county whose net excess revenue is actually being under discussion can't be in the minority vote and have the other sort of counties make a decision for them about how net excess revenues are spent. Um, in general, the, the option that focuses on the corridors that uh, are directly at hand and under discussion for the net excess toll revenue, for my SACOG board members, the voting option 1B um, is the one that SACOG staff is, is looking to recommend for our SACOG board, board meeting next week. So we have upcoming meetings. Oh, the Transportation Committee did vote in the affirmative of, of supporting the overall governance structure. So it will be a staff recommendation to form a JPA. Um, they did not weigh in on the voting requirements because that was sort of hot off the press. So we just provide that as information to get additional direction. Um, and we'll incorporate that into the staff recommendation for the full board meeting next week. So in addition to, to the discussion today among these board members, um, the, the next sort of critical path for this discussion is the SACOG board meeting, which is next Thursday at 9.30 a.m. and the Yolo Transportation District board meeting, which is the following Monday on the 22nd. As I understand it, I'm gonna pause here and see if there are any questions related to the content I provided um, before your director provides some more presentation and discussion. Okay, for, first of all, is that the end of the presentation? Yes. Okay, so um, let me ask this for the board. I see some board members punch up here. Um, I'm gonna take public comment first and um, uh, as a chair prerogative and mostly because he, the chair can't punch his own, uh, the past chair can't punch his own card up. I'm gonna go to uh, board member Desmond first here, but let's, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, we'll go, thank you, Kathleen, yeah. We're gonna go, uh, we have two members of the public signed up to speak. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Dan Allison, and then after that, Mr. Brian Ab Abinette. Good afternoon, board members. My name is Dan Allison, and I'm a resident of the city in District 4. 
Um, I support the creation of the regional JPA. I support the governance options that have one seat, voting seat for Caltrans, but not two. Caltrans still wants two. I don't think anybody thinks that's a good idea. Um, I definitely support the uh, designation of Sacramento Transportation Authority as the Sacramento County representative in the JPA. Um, I support tolling because it's part of the user pays um, ideal, which we should move towards and we'll have to move towards. We can't afford to maintain our expensive freeways off of our gas tax or any other kind of tax that um, is taxed on everybody. Um, if the JPA had been in place um, when the Fix 50 project started, it would probably be a tolled lane instead of an HOV lane, and that's a good thing. It's a missed opportunity, but we can make up for that in the future. Um, the fact that I support the tolling JPA does not mean that I support the YOLO 80 capacity expansion, but if lanes are added, they must be tolled. Um, the question about membership and voting, um, I think there's a simple solution to it that will last the test of time, and that's that um, representation and voting is based on lane miles of tolled lanes. Um, that way, as Sacramento County increases its share, it gets more voting privilege. Um, this, how many representatives does each county get and how does it change over time? It's pointless base it on told lane miles. And that way it's clear to everybody and it can change over time without having to go back and revisit the charter for the JPA. And lastly, um, I would like to see uh, all HOV lanes converted to told lanes and I'd like eventually all lanes to be told. We have to pay for our freeways and that's the best way to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allison. I Sounds like you might have bugged our phones here or something. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brian Ab Abnant. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. Um, as a project partner, do you mind if I request an additional minute or so to read my, my remarks? Um, if there's no uh, objections here from the board, yes. It's not much longer, yeah. but that's just what I can prepare for. Uh, good afternoon, board members. My name is Brian Abinat, Acting Planning Director for Yolo Transportation District. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on this item, and uh, my remarks will be brief. Um, prompted by the Yolo 80 Managed Lanes Project, which uh, Kathleen introduced to you just a moment ago, in May 2023, Yolo TD took the initiative to start a regional tolling governance process where we presented the very first JPA agreement draft to potential future JPA partners, including uh, Placer County TPA, El Dorado CTC, SACOG, STA, and Caltrans. The conversations that have occurred over the past eight months have been thoughtful and fully inclusive of all potential partners' interests. Specifically, the last two months, all the partners, including STA staff, have worked tirelessly to establish a JPA framework that meets the needs of immediate and future members while still providing the JPA with the flexibility needed for decision-making. The draft agreement attempts to ensure the decision-making issue seemingly of most importance to many regional electives, and that being the expenditures of net excess revenue, is as collaborative and equitable as possible. We've listened very carefully to Sacramento County's concerns, and we believe the options discussed by the SACOG Transportation Committee yesterday fairly balance the interests of all the parties while providing the future GAPA with the flexibility and decision-making authority it needs to deal with future complex issues. YOLO TD's position and that of the initial partners is that expanding proportional and or supermajority voting requirements to other JPA governance related decisions, particularly operations and equity considerations, will limit the JPA's ability to self-govern. The draft agreement also attempts to appeal to future members to join the JPA rather than establish their own tolling authority, as we believe and hope you do as well, that coordinated regional decision-making and a seamless user experience represents the region's and the traveling public's best interests. Furthermore, the agreement allows future members to discuss and negotiate with the JPA their terms of entry via an MOU process. Uh, the purpose of today's discussion is to shed light on the process that uh, we've pursued to date for establishing a regional tolling authority 
and to explain the regional team's logic for the terms in the JPA agreement you see today. Our team is proud of what we have accomplished to date in an impossibly tight time frame, and we hope you see the merits in our proposal. Appreciate the opportunity to share YOLOTD's perspective. Thanks. Thank you. You made that within two minutes, so appreciate that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much. First, I, I do want to thank uh, our uh, staff at SACOG, at the STA, and uh, YOLO uh, YTA as well. Uh, for this this conversation, obviously, I think uh, some of the comments made both by uh, um, at the during public comment are the the crux of some of the conversations we have. So, uh, with that, let me first uh, pass this over to our past chair, uh, uh, Board Member Desmond, and then I've got uh, Board Member Talemantes, Daniels, and Cerna uh, lined up to speak here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate it. And, and let me just echo the thanks to uh, SACOG staff, certainly Kathleen, um, uh, Christina out there, and also YCTD, STA, and all, all the staff and, and, and work on this. I know it's been it's been difficult, a lot of competing interests. appreciate you being here today. I mean, I understand, obviously, STA is not going to be voting on this JPA, but certainly we are all represented on SACOG, so it's an important discussion to have here. So just really appreciate you being here. And I, I think that, let me just say first and foremost, uh, no one is interested in doing anything that's going to interfere with or delay Yolo County's ability to keep this project moving forward and getting um, the funds it needs to set up these first managed toll lanes. So I just want to preface everything I say with that. Um, I do think that, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the comments from uh, the first public commenter uh, in terms of proportionality. I mean, I think just intuitively when we set up JPAs, I look at them anyway more like the House of Representatives. You know, there has to be proportional representation versus the U.S. Senate. I understand that a JPA like this is a little bit different, um, and and so I really applaud SACOG staff in coming up with a you know kind of a more novel you know way to approach this kind of this consensus approach. Um, I do think you know one of my concerns when this JPA came up was that um, we don't want to have another county be able to dictate, for instance, to Sacramento County how you're going to spend excess toll revenue if there is any. <laughs> First of all, because there may not be any, um, how that how that excess toll revenue is going to be spent in your county. I also am concerned that one county cannot dictate to another county with managed toll lanes how those lanes are going to be operated. But I also think that that all the counties who are members of this GAPA uh, will will certainly have an incentive to have consensus around all of those issues as toll lanes traverse multiple jurisdictions, both in terms of the excess toll revenue and the operations. And I think that I, I really like that 1B option. I know I don't, I don't think we have that in front of us today, <laughs> Kathleen, but I, I think that's a really good solution. I would like to see that also applied to operations. I think we will be able to resolve that. I think some of these things, we can also wait until the JPA is actually formed and resolve some of these things later on, and I'm, I'm confident that we would be able to do that with, with uh, uh, Yolo County. So just wanted to, to throw those out there as my comments. The Transportation Committee did support the staff recommendation in terms of the initial structure yesterday, and um, I'm not a member on the Transportation Committee, thanks to uh, Supervisor Kennedy, but um, I, I supported it uh, nonetheless, and I think that's, a, that's certainly a, a good approach. So thank you very much, Kathleen. Thanks you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Desmond. Uh, 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 Board Member Talemantes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Kathleen, thank you so much for explaining it. <laughs> I'm not on SACOG, so this is my first presentation um, about this project. So uh, I represent Natomas, um, and the population's really just living north of the river, and I've seen a lot of questions and concerns regarding this on social media throughout the holidays. So uh, did we do any public outreach, like in person in the districts uh, to just give people education about the project? Specifically related to the YOLO 80 project yeah. or about the creation? Yes. I, I will let Brian take that question as the lead on the project. Wonderful, thank you. 
I know it's not, I mean, we're Sacramento, so it's a little different, but people uh, in my area travel to UC Davis yeah, a lot. So. Absolutely. No, we totally get it. Um, so when Caltrans released the draft environmental impact, well, let me back up. There was um, a process dating back several years of sort of visioning for uh, the Yolo 80 project, and then there's also been broader um, you know, processes for you know, the Yolo 80 corridor from, say, the Bay Area out through uh, the Sacramento region. But for this project specifically, when the DEIR was released, Caltrans held um, two um, uh, public comment uh, open houses, right? Okay. And there was well attended by media. So the, um, so the media coverage really raised a lot of awareness. That might be why you were seeing, you know, a lot of activity on social media about the project was because it was covered well in the media. And then, interestingly, uh, Yolo TD uh, had uh, issued a online survey that people could then go to. And so once that West Sacramento event um, occurred and was covered by the media, we saw an enormous spike of, um, of responses to our survey at that time. And we also asked people where they were, um, you know, where they lived and where they worked, so we could get a sense of what was the, you know, the representation of the survey respondents. And a lot of them, I'd say, probably at least 50 to 60 percent of the responses we got were from um, what we called, you know, assume Sacramento County, but designated as east of um, of Yolo County in the Sacramento okay. region. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, and then, if I. Could just add yeah, briefly to uh, board member before you move to your second question. I think one of the goals of having a JPA and, and a regional entity for a tolling authority is for us to be able to make um, better and more consolidated communications with the public about tolling and what the future is and do that in partnership with the folks who are delivering the project, including entities like this, but also Caltrans District 3, and, and to just have like a more coordinated approach in general. Okay, thank you. Um, and I know we have just different options on the table right now, but I just want to put it out there that for me, uh, you know, I can I can be open to the different options. But uh, ooh, when you get the tolling, if you could afford the fee, you get to pass everybody that's waiting on the side. And so for me, I think about the working people that have to travel and have to if they don't have someone to travel with, just because they don't have as much money as someone that owns a Tesla or you know like fancier car. You see people with more money traveling down. So as we move forward on this project, that's just one of my areas of concern, um, and just want to make sure that we really take equity um, into mind of what people can afford and what people can't afford. Absolutely. So prior to joining SACOG late last year, I worked at Caltrans headquarters and, and the sort of particular issue I worked most on is how do, how do we make our highways more sustainable and more equitable? And so I thought about this particular this issue in particular a lot and I've done a lot of research on, on what other regions do. One of the first goals that, that SACOG, Caltrans District 3, and YOLO TD have for this JPA should the various boards elect to create it is to do a tolling equity study and SACOG has already allocated some funds to make sure that at least gets done in Yolo County, but we'd like to see what opportunities there are to look at that at a regional scale to be able to answer that question. I will say just briefly, since I know many of you are new to tolling, I think we want to think about um, how, a, how a toll lane compares to the status quo. We know that um, low-income drivers often have to travel longer distances. Many of them don't travel during the peak because they work at different, um, more shift-type work and, and work in different areas. And, and also, um, Many of them pay a much higher cost on the margins when they're late for things. So often what we see in other regions in California that have toll lanes is that folks at all income levels use them. You know, if, if you're like me, you have the privilege that if you're five minutes late to work, you don't have a tremendous, my boss is here, so you don't have a tremendous uh. consequence <laughs> to pay for being five minutes late to work, but lots of low income yeah. folks don't, don't have that same um, flexibility. And so, so we, see, we do see users of the toll facility in other regions, but it's something we want to look at in particular for our, okay. for our county. Thank you so much, that makes me feel better. Um, and to my colleagues, uh, as the GPA is formed, um, I'd express interest in uh, being a board member of it in the future. Thank you. Great, thank you, Board Member Talemantes. Board Member Daniels. Thank you, uh, very nice presentation. Uh, it's nice to watch somebody who really knows their stuff, and you can <laughs> tell you do. Brett, thank you very much for that. One of the things you mentioned was that there would be some public hearings and public meetings, and I believe you said to see if they even want it. Um, is that correct? 
Uh, what I was referring to is that the California Transportation Commission holds a required public hearing before the California Transportation Commission makes its decision whether or not to give a segment of state highway system the ability to toll. So the, as part of the environmental process, um, my colleague Brian discussed the multiple public hearings that have been held for the YOLO 80 project. The, that amount of public hearing that's required as part of environmental documents would also be required for future projects. This public hearing is required just for the California Transportation Commission piece. So there's a lot of layers of required public hearings and so th those public hearings though how, how would people even know about that at some level you know they're just get, getting on the freeway and going to work every day and and whatnot and and uh, you know I, I, I fear that they'll just never even hear about the opportunity to say that's not something I even want and um, I can just say that as I mentioned this to people uh, you know that um, I get a whole bunch of, man, no way. <laughs> no way do I want to even you know, see another lane go up and people are flying by me just because they have the ability to pay, just as it was mentioned a minute ago, that um, you know, it's already costly to go to the Bay Area. You're gonna spend at least 50 or 60 bucks a day to go to the Bay Area and come back and, and whatnot. And so, yeah, some people have the ability to do that and pay more, but I think a whole lot of people don't um, and they feel like they really shouldn't as they're filling up their gas tank and paying their taxes and then they're watching the Tesla go by who, who doesn't have to. So uh, your comments are, are well, um, well heard and taken in um, by me and the team who, who work on this. What I'll say is that so um, SACOG staff is, is larger and has the luxury of not having to be as nimble as the staff that, that works for STA. And so we have sort of a robust communications team who, who we're looking to leverage for this JPA should these boards elect to create it to really make sure that we're um, getting the word out about the existence of this new JPA so folks know when it meets and how to get access to its agendas and how to be able to weigh in on the decisions that it's making and also to be able to do a better job of pub publicizing what's happening with the milestones of the various projects including this um, CTC public hearing that would occur likely sometime in February or early March but open to suggestions today and, and also offline through your staff on, on how to better get the word out. Okay, thank you. Thank you board member Daniels. Uh, board member Cerna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I too want to oh, uh, thank you for a, a very um, thorough presentation. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned that you've done a lot of research on on toll lanes. Um, I assume that research is both as it's been applied here in California and elsewhere. Um, what do we know about the safety of, of toll lanes? Because if you put, I mean, I, I presume just uh, anecdotally that when you have the ability to have traffic uh, move at a higher speed next to traffic that is could be standstill, uh, you increase uh, the propensity for some dangerous situations. So what do we know about um, the safety aspect of, of toll lanes? Sure, so uh, I'll start with a caveat, which as this is the case with all projects, it depends on the context, exactly what we're talking about and how that exact highway is configured. In general, right, the, that, that those types of issues that you're considering are taken into account during the comparison of different alternatives. So there's some information on that in the draft environmental document for YOLO 80 that's out for public comment right now and would be a key consideration during the development of the design for that facility. I'll also say that how um, tolls are charged and what uh, rate they're charged at will be a critical decision of the the JPA board should these other boards choose to create one and they'll have to take into account considerations on you know how do we um, how do we alter the toll to be able to make sure that there's not a, a significant delta between the, the regular free lane and the tolled lane and that, that it's operating safely. So it's really an ongoing conversation based on once you understand how the toll facility is used. But there's a number of different um, types of measures, whether from physical infrastructure or from toll policy to be able to manage the demand of the facility to ensure safety for travelers. So when it comes to design, is there anything in particular that's would be a, a unique challenge or, I don't know, opportunity, uh, since the way I understand um, what's being proposed, we'd have toll lanes uh, not just in a, on a, the surface uh, at grade freeway, but also uh, a causeway, uh, where you really don't have any opportunity for, you know, for shoulder use. So is there anything that at this early stage um, you know of that, that presents some, some uniqueness to, to this? 
So um, as you know, there's multiple alternatives under consideration in the draft environmental document that's out right now. So I can't speak to what the exact configuration of the YOLO 80 project would be. Um, I, I'd, I'd point folks to the environmental document and its discussion of safety. But what I will say, right, is that Caltrans is, is designing this project and is the lead on the EIR. And, and they're really the experts on, on the highway system. And they've seen all types of conditions across California, including sort of like raised viaducts like we have in, on the YOLO Causeway, extremely constrained. Um, areas um, in, in the more rural parts of our region that I'm, I'm more familiar with. There are, there are a lot of really constrained um, highway, highway situations where, where you need to figure out how to incorporate safety into those. There's a lot of measures that can be taken, but it's not my expertise. And then lastly, um, will the uh, technology that will be deployed with uh, tow lanes, um, will, will it simply rely on um, um, you know, some kind of device in, in a vehicle combined with maybe license plate reading, or will it also include um, uh, cooperation participation by California Highway Patrol? So it'll definitely require cooperation and participation of California Highway Patrol. One of the advantages of including Caltrans District 3 in the JPA, the future potential JPA, is that Caltrans has a really strong relationship with California Highway Patrol. Makes sense. Um, and so they're able to help improve the partnership with our region and CHP on the, de on the deployment of this. Um, I'll say so as part of the application that we have to submit to the California Transportation Commission for YOLO 80, there's this document called the Concept of Operations Report, and it answers some some of the questions that you're talking about in terms of like, will there be gantries? Will there be the fast track things in the window? Do we look at license plates? In general, the, the plan um, is to try to make it as consistent with what we have in the Bay Area as possible, given, given that we know that a lot of the residents of this region do use that system on occasion to travel to Bay Area. So we want to, to have as much interoperability as possible so folks are kind of familiar with the system. But that report does also leave a lot of flexibility for the potential future JPA board to be able to respond to incoming technologies or any uh, changes in state legislation that would allow other types of technology to measure both vehicles and also occupancy of those vehicles that are traveling in the toll lane. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Cerna. Apologize for the gaffe earlier. You know. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate Kathleen and uh, uh, Kevin and also Brian for, for your presentation today. Um, I think, you know, the purpose is of why we wanted to make sure that this also was agendized is to elevate the awareness from um, all of our uh, members here at STA who, uh, who are going to get questions throughout the region. And I think the the, the number one um, uh, I th uh, what the number one issue here is the success of uh, of a regional project. I mean the the fact is, and I think uh, one of the concerns that this board may have uh, is that uh, uh, as was mentioned by the speaker, that a number of these in the long term number of the impacts are going to be in Sacramento County, whether it's the I-5, the 80, the 50, the Business 80 corridor, all of those are heavily within the County of Sacramento. And, um, you know, whether it's, a, whether it's a Friday afternoon or a Sunday evening, we see that from folks coming from all over uh, wanting to get up to one of the gems of California up in, up in Tahoe. Um, and so, uh, so I think that the fact that we're looking at this today is, uh, and talking about one, the structure, I want to um, thank and uh, commend Supervisor uh, uh, Desmond here for his, uh, for his work. We want to thank our staff here who worked with SACOG staff and, and uh, others at, the, at both the Caltrans to find a, a unique way. Um, as much as sometimes we would want proportionality as well, we want to make sure that uh, we're having a balanced approach. Uh, the last thing I think that um, uh, whether you agree with tolling or not, it's, uh, it's, it's how uh, the final decisions are made. And I think an important thing to take away here is that uh, the majority of the funding here is, is pretty prescriptive. Um, and, uh, and even before you can ever get to uh, excess toll revenue, most of it is, is making sure that we're taking care of the financing and the maintenance of, of the project. Um, and so the, the fact that if we ever even have any excess toll revenues is, is, a, is a big question. I mean, those are, but, the, but to that point, 
Um, I think there are those uh, uh, on this board who'd, who'd say, well, maybe we want to use that for more public transit on these express lanes. Maybe there are other mitigating factors that we want to, uh, and, I, and that is why I think it's important to figure out what, our, what the best uh, voting structure is um, with that. Uh, more to come, but uh, we're going to be uh, briefing this board more often, and, uh, and if the decision process moves forward as, as it is, STA will be uh, recommending um, uh, board members to those positions as well uh, to, on behalf of the county. Uh, with that, let me start, pass this over to Mr. Busey uh, on your report. Yeah, let me, I'm going to try to do a quick presentation to get us down to where I think we need to go as far as direction uh, that I'm going to be requesting from the board. Uh, so I appreciate that. There was a lot of information, um, and so what I want what I want to do is just ensure that um, the board is behind where this thing is going. Um, this thing is moving very fast. Uh, we're not a member of this JPA right now. We potentially are a future member. Um, so I want to talk about a few things here. Uh, so the direction needed today uh, for Sacramento County: Should STA make director's appointments as the member agency uh, in prior versions of the? Uh, in prior versions of the JPA, it was a little bit unclear on how representation from Sacramento County would, would come to be. Uh, there was a SACOG approval process. That has now been removed. It's pretty, they put SCA in there. We have a clear path to representation. Um, and then the second is, uh, should Sacramento County have some level required approval on tolling within their community? Uh, so for that first, first, first slide is, basically why I think it makes sense for SCA to be uh, the member agency. Uh, we're a countywide transportation agency with representation from the county and all corporated cities. We're the only agency like that uh, within Sacramento. Uh, we have 16 board members, which is more board members than any of these other county agencies uh, related to transportation. Um, and then SDA has funded or financed many of these managed lanes projects. Most, a lot of these HOV lane projects you're seeing that Caltrans is building, they've got Measure A money behind them. Um, a toll lane is just another type of managed lane. Uh, and then finally, uh, SDA has a very defined role on tolling authority approval. Um, so uh, we're required to be consulted with prior to an agency uh, applying for tolling authority uh, for a facility within Sacramento County. Uh, moving on to item uh, two, uh, should Sacramento Ca County have some level of required approval on tolling within their community? And I'll talk about what that might look like before I give you some options. Uh, so what this would look like is a majority vote of the regional JPA board, that's that, um, the CARTA board, and a majority of vote of the county directors appointed that JPA board would have to approve an item. And when I say county, I just mean county generally could, could be a county, city, but all from the same county. Um, so what could this apply to? We've had a lot of discussions uh, over the past about six weeks on this. Uh, this could apply to disadvantaged communities and equity and how that works within Sacramento, uh, tolling pricing, uh, tolling enforcement. How do you handle tolling violations? Um, is there a, is there a um, uh, initial lower violation cost and then it ramps up kind of thing? Uh, and then excess uh, toll revenue, um, which I'm gonna talk about in the next slide. So over the past week, six weeks, um, I would say the chair, myself, I was the chair Desmond, the former chair Desmond, uh, current chair Gara as well has been engaged in these conversations to try to uh, figure out if we can work with SACOG and the other partners to come with, to some sort of resolution on this. And so this is the first option I think that, that we talked about under option 1B of the Sacramento Transportation Committee, this is that option, right? Uh, so we could move forward with uh, approval of this, of excess quarter revenue only for that county approval, right? So does it make sense that we have authority to, uh, by our directors, have to have a majority vote to approve this? Uh, so quarters will be defined by the JPA. There'll be regional quarters, there'll likely be county quarters. So I-80, for instance, would probably be a regional quarter given it's probably between uh, Placer and Sacramento, uh, potentially Yolo County. And then I-5 is a county corridor because it's primarily um, planned for tolling is only in the county. Uh, so for those regional corridors, it require a majority vote of the full CARTA JPA board as well as a majority of each county along that regional corridor for how those revenues would be used. And then for a county corridor, it would require a majority vote of the county uh, itself and a majority vote of the board of the JPA board which that corridor is established. 
Um, and now there are a lot of requirements around those funds. Uh, there's a Caltrans uh, consultation requirement on those funds, probably do the operation maintenance side of things. Uh, SACOG as part of the JPA is, is once a consultation process as well. Um, there's also um, the JPA agreement reflects that there needs to be consistent with the regional plan, the MTPSCS. Uh, and finally, those revenue, like was been said before, those revenues have to stay within that corridor. Um, now, usually that corridor is a little fuzzy. It's about within a mile of the corridor, so it could be active transportation projects in parallel with that facility, but they have to be fairly close to that facility, right? Uh, it could be transit projects. It could be transit services. Uh, it could be a complete street project, right, adjacent to a toll facility. Um, but that has to stay where the revenue generating that quarter has to stay within that corridor. Um, and then all other, under this scenario, option A here, all other board action require a simple majority. So that is the first option uh, that we, I think we're, we're comfortable with. Now there's one other option, um, which is option B, is should we just, there's a lot to, a lot to consider right now. We're not, um, we're not necessarily parties to the agreement. Uh, we're kind of future members, so it's been, not a lot of time to negotiate this, so we could uh, look at negotiating this sort of county approval idea um, at some point in the future. Uh, but this likely acquire a JPA amendment in the future. Uh, we'd have to get SACOG, Caltrans, and YOLO TD all to agree to this, which could be challenging. Um, the, that's kind of the, the challenge behind it. The positive would be uh, allow new members the time to better understand the range of anticipated policy actions that the JPA board would take on, especially in the frame of the YOLO 80 project. Um, and then we could look at certain um, voting requirements and understand better where we think it makes sense that that county voting approval prior uh, requirement needs to apply. So it can be very specific and not, not necessarily be blanket and uh, make it difficult for the regional, uh, the Carter board to pass things. So those are the two options. I'll talk about timeline. Timeline is uh, pretty intensive, so um, uh, meeting was yesterday with the SACOG Transportation Committee meeting. Um, they have to actually create this board on the 18th um, at SACOG, and they're also gonna appoint some directors. So that means by tomorrow, they have to have actual draft, an updated draft JPA sent out to their board for consideration on the 18th. And then, um, so we have a very small window uh, on these changes. And then the uh, January 22nd, the Yolo TD would do the same, they would adopt it. So this last slide kind of gives you the overview of the two items. Um, you got one should be, should SDA be the appointing agency um, to ensure we have representation? Uh, and then two, we have, for two, we have option A or option B. I view option, I kind of have this funny graphic about, you know, a bird in the hand versus two in the bush, right? So you've got option, uh, I'm sure Patrick, Mr. Hume would love that, right? Thank you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, right now I think there's agreement between option, we have option A, we can move forward with option B, right? right? And then we could look at option B, which is we could try to negotiate this later. And the challenge there with option B is we could get exactly what we have in the future. We could get more, we could get less. We don't know what we're going to get, right? And so it's, it is a challenge. So I am just looking for direction on um, confirming, I think confirming um, one STA as the agency, and then two, if there's any sort of direction on A or B, um, we can take that back and SACOG can hopefully uh, insert some language into their JPA agreement by the end of tomorrow. Uh, and uh, hopefully we're in a good, we're feeling a much better place if we choose to join this JPA in the future. Thank you, Mr. Busey. Um, you know, let me first pass this over to uh, Board Member Desmond, then I have Board Member Kennedy signed up here. And uh, I guess my only comment here is that uh, I don't know much after the debate we've had over the last two months with the multiple agencies. I just, I wonder how much more will change even if we went through option B. But let me pass this over to Board Member Desmond. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My first thing is, so Kevin, obviously this is, would be, you're asking for direction from us to what, you know, issue a, a, a letter to SACOG in support of a certain approach, or wh what precisely are you asking for in terms of influence at SACOG? Verbal direction to continue to coordinate with SACOG on, on negotiating favorable okay. terms related, related to these items, which, that's all. Okay. Uh, I mean, from, from my perspective, obviously the, the first element you talked about, STA representation, STA selecting two of the three members from Sacramento County. I mean, I, I think that the Transportation Committee at, at SACOG approved that yesterday. I think that that makes sense. I mean, just to underscore what the structure would be is STA would choose two members from Sacramento County. The third Sacramento County representative would be selected among the SACOG delegation from Sacramento County. 
I think that's accurate. And I, I think that makes a lot of sense. With respect to the voting, I mean, I think there's obviously there's a there's a, a lot of trepidation about injecting a proportionality structure, um, and and I, I think we can still accomplish our objectives without going down that path by um, going with kind of a consensus approach that that SACOG has outlined. With respect to SACOG's option 1B, which is essentially any member of the JPA, any member county of the JPA would have to consent uh, with two out of the three votes to uh, how to expend any excess revenue. I don't think we would have to be more prescriptive than that in terms of saying it has to stay within the county because you would have to have the consent of two of the three members from that county. And, I, and I'm fine with that. Now, I, I do think and that's all, this is everything I've said, that's all consistent with SACOG staff recommendations. I do think the uncertainty comes with how we deal with issues and decisions relating to the pricing, relating to the operations, relating to the, you know, the time and hours, and a lot of other things that could come up with the management of these lanes. I, I think uh, two, two options exist with respect to those operational considerations. One. We could delay this and, and let this JPA get set up with Yolo County and, and hold that issue to resolve later, or we could handle it just like we would handle the excess revenue. That any county who, um, uh, it, it would require two of the three votes from any county where that uh, tolled lane uh, traverses, if that makes sense. Um, and to me, that, to me, that seems reasonable. I, I, I mean, I, I think that's a reasonable approach, and so that that would be uh, my suggestion. But if 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 there are other partners that that really you know want to delay that aspect of this thing, I'm, I'm fine with that too. But my preference would be SACOG staff recommendation one B that any county affected by whether it's excess revenue or operations, uh, two of the three members of that um, county need to, to approve it. Those are my comments. Very good. Uh, Board Member Kennedy. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> um, agree with uh, Mr. Desmond. A um, couple things I just want to point out is you mentioned the timeline, and the timeline has been incredibly tight. And I just want to point out that that's not STA's doing, that's not SACOG's doing. That's something that we inherited. Um, just, just so that we're clear on that. Um, I, I, too, agree that, and I have all along, this is my fourth time seeing Kathleen's wonderful presentation. Um, <laughs> And, but all along, I've thought that STA should be the, the body to uh, nominate the majority coming from Sacramento County. And the other thing I also want to just clarify so that everybody's clear, and the three people that are watching this on TV, um, <laughs> is, is, is that, um, uh, and two chihuahuas, by the way, um, and is, is that when we, we keep saying county, 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 it's the Sacramento County, it's not the county of Sacramento that we're talking about, just mm -hmm. so we're all clear on that. But um, I, I agree, I did sit in on the meeting virtually uh, at the SACOG board. Um, most of the um, detractors, this will never go through their county. Um, quite frankly, and um, you know, I think that what we're doing gives us the local control that we need, mm -hmm. but doesn't hinder and hold up the process. My final note is that there's a lot of talk of this approval of ex excess toll revenue. Don't get excited, folks. Um, yeah. These things typically are not money makers. Um, that's 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 not why you get into it. If you do, you'll be highly dis you know disappointed. Yeah. Um, so, you know, let's not make a bigger issue of that particular issue than it probably is really going to be. Thank you. Thank you very much, Board Member Kennedy. Board Member Hume. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I'm going to start off by being that pedantic jerk and say that depending on how they're feeling, their use of the word, that word there, changes its spelling. Um, now that I've said that, uh, I will say that, uh, you know, generally, um, I find it frustrating when government always looks to revenue, revenue, revenue. Um, however, in a situation like this, I, I see it as a user fee that is easily avoidable, or, or at least can be avoided. Uh, and I've driven in other places around the world where it's not a toll lane, it's a toll facility, uh, and then there are maybe other facilities that are not tolled and or exceptions for vehicles that meet certain criteria. And so I think if, you, if we really want to go down this, maybe not initially, but at some point we should be looking that way uh, at how we, how we really uh, maximize. Um, and it's, it's painless. I mean, it's a little transponder in the car that beeps when you go under the thing and, and you receive the bill on your registration or whatever. 
Uh, but that being said, I agree wholeheartedly with everything that um, uh, uh, former Chair Desmond uh, mentioned uh, with respect to, to how this thing ought to be set up. And uh, um, I, I think that this is, is probably something that you know, is going to continue to be a reality in the Sacramento region. And so therefore, the, the more we get out in front of the governmental structure of it, the better. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Hume, and, and you're right. I've, I've traversed the, some of those toll facilities, and um, and I think what was brought up at the presentation today, it's those regional toll facilities, and particularly the Yolo, Sacramento intersection, where you're going to have the 50 and the I-5, and if those are working together and have their own on ramps in the future, far on, well, whatever the design goes on, that's when they're going to become a value to. Uh, um, to our, our residents. And that's, that's what this should become, is a value to residents, not something that comes and residents feel it's punitive. And it has to provide, mm -hmm. I think, when some people have said, is a, a, a value of their time. But the other piece here that I think Mr. Uh, Allison had brought up is also the, the impacts on air quality. I mean, the, the fact is, is our region is impacted by air quality. And so part of this is addressing the uh, the day-to-day -day impacts on this. Um, um, I think, you know, Mr. Busey, I'm hearing from the board here a lot of the conversations we'd have before. So I think you've got direction here for from um, a good consensus. I, I have been working with, a, 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 you know, board member Desmond here. Um, on this as well, and so I, I appreciate that that option. I do also agree that STA should be the one to select it. Uh, more likely than not, by selecting from STA, you're going to have elected officials who have had an expertise or developed their expertise on transportation as well, and I think that's an important uh, factor to have when coming to sit on the tolling authority. It's already knowing uh, some of our own challenges and being able to articulate those to our other county partners. Um, with that, I, I don't know if you need a motion on this, uh, but I think it's in, with this direction here, and I, I want to, because it's been staff direction, um, but I want to um, move over to council here, but I feel like you know staff direction is sufficient in this item. Yeah, I agree. I mean, nothing formal, unless there was some clear opposition here to the advocacy efforts that uh, the director has been making, the direction given so far seems sufficient, unless anybody okay. else wants to weigh in. Well, rather than going down further, uh, a further bureaucratic, uh, bureaucratic group, uh, loophole, um, we'll take that as direction to our staff to continue the, con the conversations. Um, most of us have um, representation on SACOG, so if it does go sideways, we'll, we'll hear about it pretty quickly. <laughs> you know? um, and that sideways, not sideshows. That's for another transportation conversation. Okay, thank you. Mr. Busey, is that enough for item number nine? Thank you. Okay. Okay, Madam Clerk, we're going to go to our last item on the agenda today. Comments. This is a comments of authority members. Any comments from the board here? Mr. Daniels. Yeah, um, I'm going to be moving from an alternate role to a primary role on this uh, board, and I'm looking very forward to it. I'm excited about it. And I can't tell you how extremely excited I am now that I, I get to know that the incredible Eric Guerra will lead this uh, not that Mr. Desmond didn't do a fine job, did a fine job, but uh, there's nobody like the incredible uh, Eric Guerra at running a meeting, and, I, and I'm looking forward to it very much. Um, I did want to bring up one thing. Uh, uh, this is the Sacramento Transportation Authority, but as we sit here, we see Folsom, Rancho Cordova, Sacramento County, Galt, uh, Citrus Heights. Um, and I'm wondering if we can consider, uh, and I don't know, this may be uh, required by law of some kind, but um, is there uh, a, a chance maybe to come back and have a discussion on uh, changing our name to the Sacramento Area Transportation Authority, the Sacramento Regional Transportation Authority, something that uh, creates a, a better definition of uh, what we do here? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Daniels. We'll have staff look at that, and I, I do think we're, we're by statute, but we'll, we will definitely look at that, uh, that request. Okay, with that, no other board members signed up to speak. Um, is there a, a plaque presentation for the outgoing yeah. chair? No? Oh. <laughs> I, I, I sent you a really nice email earlier. <laughs> oh, that, oh for Christ. Yeah, We have a party afterwards, you know, in the parking lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're adjourned before any other shenanigans at 3.02 p.m. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>